Right now on 10 News this morning, neighbors desperately trying to save two people after a fire rips through a Paradise Hills home. We're learning more that one person has died. Four people are shot to death at a Nashville Waffle House. Four others injured. A manhunt underway now for the suspected shooter. And we're live at the annual March for Babies event. Details on how March of Dimes raises money for the health of babies. 10 News This Morning starts right now. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Good Sunday morning to you. Great to have you here. I'm Jim Patton. I'm Mary McKenzie. Let's get right over to Melissa Messia. We watched this shot all morning. I know. Still beautiful out of Dog Beach in Del Mar. Oh, yeah. If you like sunshine, you're going to like it today. Definitely spend it outdoors. It is Earth Day. So it's a perfect day to spend it outside. Downtown Sky Cam here at 8.30 in the morning. Right now, our current conditions in this location, we are looking at 62 degrees with calm winds, I believe. Sometimes this button just doesn't want to work. There we go. Calm wind, 62 degrees at sunset at 7 to 24. So along the coast today, we are going to hit the lower 70s for your high. That's 70 degree mark by 5 o'clock. In our inland valleys, it is going to be warmer. Lower 80s by today, mid 70s by 5. We do have a very slight cool down in store. I will have that for your 7 day forecast, Mary. All right, Mal, thank you. We have an update now to breaking news. We first had last night at 11. One person has died after a fire tears through a home in Paradise Hills. It started just after 10 on Calle Cumbre Street. Neighbors tell us they heard a loud boom right before the fire started. The cell phone video shows witnesses breaking out windows, desperately trying to get to the people who were trapped inside. We heard them in there screaming for their life. And um, they're, they're, they're good men. They don't bother nobody. Neighbors were able to pull the people out. They were taken to the hospital where one of them we have learned did die. The other person's condition is unknown. Fire crews are looking into the cause of the fire. And an update to breaking news. We first brought you on 10 News yesterday morning. Fire investigators now say a house fire that started in City Heights was intentionally set. It started around 3 yesterday morning at a home on 42nd Street near University Avenue. Neighbors say they saw a car speeding away from the scene just before the fire started. One man was inside at the time. By the time we woke up, you know, some of his hair had burned off right here, you know, so yeah, the, the, the police took him out there because you know, he didn't have no clothes on, so they just put a blanket on him, you know, so because it was chilly. And the man was not badly hurt. The home appears to be, though, a total loss as well as the owner's work truck. Investigators haven't released any information yet about a suspect. Jim, we do have another update here to breaking news. Police have confirmed four people were killed in this shooting at a Waffle House in Tennessee. Right now, they are still searching for the shooter. We do have live pictures here from the scene where you can see there it is still very active at this hour. A total of six people were shot. This happened in Antioch outside of Nashville. Again, we don't know the motive, but police have released a picture of the suspect. This here, Travis Rain King. He's 29 years old from Illinois. Police say the vehicle the gunman arrived in is registered to him. Also a new picture here. Police have tweeted out this photo here of the rifle they believe was used in the shooting. They say a customer was able to wrestle the gun away from the shooter. Mary, of course, all of this still under investigation, but they are calling that customer a hero. All right, Mel, thank you. A three year old boy is recovering in the hospital this morning after being hit by a car at a local school. Police say the boy stepped in front of a pickup truck in the quad at Crawford High School yesterday morning. The truck rolled over the boy's head. He's got two skull fractures. He was, of course, rushed to the hospital, but is expected to recover. President Trump taking to Twitter to lash out at his former FBI director, as well as attacking suggestions his personal attorney would turn on him. ABC's Tara Palmieri has details. Overnight, President Trump raging about those Comey memos that reveal his private conversations in the Oval Office, tweeting, James Comey's memos are classified. I did not declassify them. They belong to our government. Therefore, he broke the law. This as the inspector general investigates whether the fired FBI director leaked classified documents when he gave the memos to a friend who passed them on to the New York Times. The White House deputy press secretary telling ABC News that information never should have been made public. He didn't just leak it. He set up an intricate, elaborate scheme with which he could take those documents, get them to the New York Times, and put out classified information. But Comey disagrees, saying the memos were not classified. I understood this to be my recollection recorded of my conversation with the president as a private citizen 
I felt free to share that. I thought it very important to get it out. At the same time he goes after Comey, Trump's also defending his personal attorney and fixer Michael Cohen, lashing out over a report claiming that Cohen would turn on him, accusing the New York Times and the reporter on the story of, quote, going out of their way to destroy Michael Cohen and his relationship with me in the hope that he will flip. Cohen has long professed undying loyalty to Trump. I'll do anything to protect Mr. Trump. But now he faces a criminal investigation. The FBI raided his home office and hotel this month, reportedly seizing files related to the $130,000 payment to porn star Stormy Daniels. And that was ABC's Tara Palmieri reporting. President Trump and Cohen have stayed in touch since the raid. Well, a man dies after being randomly stabbed by a homeless person at a restaurant in Ventura the whole time his daughter was sitting in his lap. 35-year-old Anthony Malay and his wife were eating dinner with their five-year-old daughter when police say the homeless man walked up to Malay and stabbed him in the neck. The homeless man then left the restaurant, but police caught him shortly thereafter. He's been identified as Jamal Jackson and is now facing a first-degree murder charge. Police say the stabbing was completely random. Some new developments. Syracuse University has permanently expelled a fraternity that's behind this video that has been called extremely racist. The move comes days after the video surfaced of Theta Tau members acting out a racist, homophobic, and anti-Semitic oath. Syracuse says school authorities have already interviewed 38 students regarding the video. More interviews are planned. Students involved could face possible suspension or expulsion, and protesters have been calling for the school to expel those students. If you feel like you're shelling out more for gas lately, you are not alone. AAA says the average national price of regular unleaded gas has increased to $2.76 a gallon. Now here in San Diego, it's $3.59. Some people are finding ways to save, driving less, carpooling, and using flex fuel. But for Uber and Lyft drivers, this price hike is a major blow. You, you dread it every time you see your gas go down. You're like, you made this money, and next thing you know, you're just throwing it right back in your tank. It's ridiculous. Experts say by Memorial Day weekend, the average price in California could reach up to $4 a gallon. But prices should begin to drop by next year. Today, the March of Dimes annual March for Babies. 10 News, a proud sponsor of the event. And it raises money for health issues that affect infants like premature birth and birth defects. And 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo has been live outside for us in Oceanside. The walk has kicked off. Lots of 10 folks, 10 News folks in attendance. Good morning to you, Laura. Good morning, yes, and they are actually on their walk right now. So the park itself is a little bit lonely where the whole festival is going on. That's because they are walking, so that's a good sign. And I'm here standing in front of a family. This is Team Carlos, and this is a pretty special team, and I want to bring Katie back in um, to tell me a little bit about them. Now, this is the family that has benefited greatly from events like this. Tell me a little bit about Carlos and his family. Yes, yeah, so Team Carlos has been doing March for Babies for 10 years now, and this event has very special meaning to them. Carlos himself is living with a birth defect. Uh, his younger brother was born premature uh, and unfortunately this family also experienced loss. So um, there's just a lot of meaning to them and they've been coming out for 10 years strong um, and they're excited to have so many family members here to support them. And so I mean obviously this family like you said has been through so much and you can see these pictures here of all of their different uh, walks that they've participated in but how has this organization and this event help them? What type of services can they benefit from? Yeah, we have events here in the San Diego area. Um, you know, I'd say we have different programs. We have education, which is incredibly important. Um, and then it also really is the research because, you know, that's what we're really fighting for is that all moms and babies are healthy um, and that we don't have babies there in the NICU that are experiencing that prematurity. Perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, telling us a little bit about Carlos. Now, if you weren't able to make it out here in Oceanside, we do have another event that is happening next Saturday day at Balboa Park. You can come out here. Like I said earlier, you don't have an excuse. If Oceanside was too far, Balboa Park is a little bit closer for you. We are going to stay out here and catch up with them as they cross through that finish line. For right now, reporting live in Oceanside, Laura Acevedo, 10 News. Now, San Diego's most accurate forecast, 10 News Pinpoint Weather, sponsored by Mission Federal Credit Union. Terrific event out there. We've been talking about it's Earth Day as well today. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are going to be outside enjoying the earth. Oh, yeah, and it's a great day to enjoy the earth because of scenes like this from La Jolla. I mean, I've just been going through our various sky cams, and I really nice. can't find one that isn't gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs>
This is a beautiful shot here at 840 in the morning on this Sunday. Again, we are going to get plenty of sunshine today to wrap up your weekend. Right now, our current conditions here all across the county. We are looking at 62 in Julian, 60 in Ramona. Good morning to you in El Cajon, 62, 64 there in Carlsbad, Metro San Diego, 62 degrees. 24 hour temperature change showing that in our inland valleys, we are a few degrees warmer compared to this time yesterday. Ramona and Alpine, six degrees warmer compared to Saturday. Now other parts of the country, places like Louisiana, Tennessee, they are dealing with this storm system dumping rain in that location here in San Diego, not seeing any rain. Instead, we do have high pressure, which is keeping things above average and sunny. So instead of the rain, we are going to be dealing with the sunblock and the hat because again, we are going to get plenty of sunshine here for your Sunday. Upper 60s to lower 70s along our coastline. Escondido 82 degrees, so it is going to be warmer in our inland valleys. El Cajon 80 and then upper 70s in La Mesa. Our seven day forecast here, we're going to stay in the 70s over the next couple of days and then we're going to cool it down. When I say cool it down, it's going to be slightly cool. Just a couple degrees as we continue on with the week. Inland valleys going from the 80s to the upper 70s and then mid 70s by Wednesday. Heading up to the mountains over the next couple of days, mid 70s today. The desert's though still going to be hot in the 90s. Overall, though, for San Diego, it's ideal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect San Diego weather. Excellent. Enjoy. Thank you, Mel.